Welcome. This is Terry Ewell, and in this video I want to introduce to you five different studies or books of bassoon exercises that you might find useful, both as a student or as a teacher. These uh, particular studies, each of which have wonderful strengths, and I hope you'll become familiar with each of them. However, they also have a few weaknesses, and I want to point those out as we go through the five books. Uh, in particular, I want to discuss with you one fingering that keeps cropping up in many of these studies, and it's one that I want you to be aware of. Thanks. The fingering that is most often used on the bassoon involves the fork between the E and the, uh, the hole closed to get E and the hole closed to get C. The fingering in many of these method books has one and two down, and then the C-sharp key. And this produces a very, very harsh sound, and I do not recommend it. Okay, well, let's, let's go take a look now at these study books. In order to respect the copyright um, laws, I'm only just going to show you a few sections from each of the study books. The, uh, the opening of the book, you can see in this particular one, has uh, sections that it actually progresses very, very quickly to eighth notes. And for that reason, I find that this particular method is not appropriate for the young beginner, but may be appropriate, very appropriate, for the adult beginner, perhaps someone who has already had some musical experience. There are a few duets in the book, which is nice. Uh, it has this wonderful section at the back that, that is of, I think, of some historic importance because it does give us some insights into embellishments, ornaments in the um, 1800s, in the 19th century uh, view of those embellishments. In the back of the book, it does have a fingering chart uh, here's some trill fingerings here, and a table of fingerings. Unfortunately, this table of fingerings can be rather confusing in its layout. Um, it doesn't use the pictorial type of fingerings. But this is an excellent uh, book, again, I believe, for the adult uh, beginner. Well, here we have the second work by Julius Weisenborn that we're taking a look at. This is the Opus 8, number 1. This particular document I'm showing you right now is available online in PDF format. And the Opus 8 number 2, which is often used for all state auditions, is also available online. Uh, as we're taking a look at this, if you can take a look scrolling through, you can see that it progresses very quickly. This is the first page. We have half note and a couple of quarter notes. In the second page, we're already into eighth notes. And I'm scrolling down to the bottom here triplet eighth notes are here. Uh, we're looking through here. You've got legato. You've got staccato coming up. Um, we've also moved pretty quickly into tenor clef. I believe we saw some tenor clef right there. And similar to the other Weisenborn uh, studies we saw, it also deals with ornamentation or grace notes at the end. Progressing a little further in history, we get to the elementary method for bassoon by Skornica. And uh, this is part of the, the Rubank series. This is, in fact, the method book that I started on when I was a young bassoonist in the fourth grade. And I progressed through all of the methods, the uh, elementary onto the intermediate and the advanced. And there are some very, very excellent features in this method book. The method book does start uh, in the front with a fingering chart. Unfortunately, the first fingering given is the one I showed you that is not preferred. Um, no, actually, yeah, the one I showed you that is not preferred, the one they give here for D sharp, that is that band fingering. And, uh, and I know that's going to be a series of confusion for young students. So um, I prefer not to use that particular fingering. But it is set up very nicely for the young student. 
there is a tension to counting. Uh, the notes are, remain half notes and progress very slowly. Uh, each page is a lesson. This, uh, this page here, for instance, Lesson 7, we've got some nice duets, some rhythmic studies, uh, some other duets on the next page. So it really is an excellent book for the young beginner. Um, and I think even a beginner probably in junior high or middle school would enjoy this book as well. Progressing in history, if you will, we then get to Tuna Day. And this is a wonderful collection of books, actually, for, for other instruments as well, just as the Rubank series is for other instruments as well. This was published in 1956. And this is actually the book I used with my son when I taught him as a beginner on bassoon. He started in the fifth grade, and uh, we did enjoy this book very much. Unfortunately, it also uses the wrong E-flat fingering. Here, however, is a nice little feature. There's a uh, little practice record in there to encourage your students to practice. Um, here we just have a sample page. Notice that there are nice pictorial uh, illustrations of the fingerings. I really like that, and I thought that was very helpful for the young student. Uh, there are also duets. There are, are nice little, uh, little songs and tunes and, and plenty of work there for counting. Uh, I want to point out also one other bad fingering in here, and I will raise this up a little bit. Unfortunately, the book recommends playing B flat with the alternate B flat key here. Very bad. B flat should be played with the right hand thumb. I'm not quite sure why they recommended that. Uh, also in the back of the book, there are some test questions and supplementary materials. And last of all, I want to uh, give the most recent uh, method book to you. This is the uh, Studies in Mel Melodious Etudes, written in 1969, Henry Payne. And uh, this, this is a book that has some wonderful illustrations here of fingerings. I thought this, this worked out really well here. Unfortunately, it gives, as the second fingering, this band E-flat fingering, but at least gives a serviceable left hand E flat fingering. Uh, I do add some other fingers for E flat, which you can find out by checking on the International Double Reed Society website under the Bassoon Fingering Companion. There's a list of standard fingerings there. Also, you can go to uh, toread.net. Uh, but here's an example of some of the etudes in the book. And there's some nice studies. I would use this as a supplement. Uh, if you have a student that has switched instruments, for instance, started on the flute and or clarinet and is now playing the bassoon, this might be an excellent one for you. The tune a day may be a little bit too uh, rudimentary, uh, and they may find it even insulting because it, it, uh, it is for the younger student. But this might be a very good book for uh, someone in the middle school age uh, bracket there. So I hope that's been helpful for you as you've learned a little bit more about four studies for beginning bassoonists.